In the same way that the plague killed off the majority of priests, killed off the, um, you know, because they had, they had to give last rites, and so these were people, these were the only people in the Middle Ages who could read, and so they were hugely respected, and during the plague, during the Black Death, these people were were called upon to give the last rites to those people who were dying of the plague, of the Black Death. They came into immediate contact with the sick, and they were killed off. Ninety percent were killed off. And suddenly, the priesthood had to find uh, a different quality, a different caliber of individual to perform those duties. And the... The, um, the, 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 the service was undermined by stupidity and all, 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 all the sort of vices came in, the, the indulgences, the nonsense, the people who couldn't read Latin and so on. And I think the same sort of thing has happened in politics. And I think we'll look back and we'll say Brexit killed off the people with power, the people with discretion the people with honour. Brexit killed it off. And <laughs> as Brexit as Brexit progressed and people were thrown out of the Commons for standing up in an honourable way, uh, you, you remember Boris's expulsion of uh, people in his own party. What is left is dishonour and grasping and desperation and a lower ba a lower threshold is now demanded of those people who are going to enter political life the threshold is about whether or not they're able to parrot the slogans which have been put forward by civil servants and by their advisors and whether or not they can wear smart business dress and a tie. That is it. That is it. And so it comes as no surprise to me that Dominic Cummings should be popping up in the front page of The Independent, in The Times, in The Independent saying that he and Boris saved thousands of people during the uh, COVID outbreak. Yeah, well, and in The Times, we're told that he has now started a new political party. And this is going to be called the Startup Party. It's like something out of Tom and Jerry or Monty Python. Uh, he says, the Tories now obviously represent nothing except a continuation of the shit show. Well, anybody with a mind does not use the word obviously. If something is obvious, then you don't need to say it. If something is not obvious, you've used the word mis uh, in, 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 in an inappropriate way. You've used the word mistakenly. Higher taxes, he goes on to say. Worse violent crime, more debt, anti-entrepreneurs, public services failing, immigration out of control. But Labour, I think, will not alter the ultimate trajectory very much. There'll be continuity Treasury, continuity David Cameron, George Osborne, Rishi Sunak. So everything will keep failing and everyone will even be, will be even more miserable by 2026 than they are now. If Nigel Farage unretires, the Tories could easily be driven down to double-digit seats and then discussions of a start-up party and replacing them will go from a very fringe idea to a very mainstream idea, he said. So what he's trying to do is to replace the Reform Party. That way lies madness. But madness will beget madness, and I don't think Domin Dominic Cummings is somebody who is likely to be high up on the sanity scale. Uh, he says that this um, party would be completely different from other parties. He says that it would be the party most people in the country would get behind, a party which ruthlessly focused on the voters, not on Westminster and the old media. Uh, he talks about the rotten Tory horror show. Um, and, but, his, but his key to this party is Nigel Farage. 
And that's the key to the Reform Party. That was the key to the Brexit Party. That was the key to the UKIP Party. Nigel Farage. It's defined by one man, much the same as Brexit was defined by one man, as the Conservatives and the Labour Party have been defined by one man since 2016, in fact, since before that point, since about 2012. And one man's huge power. Uh, and what is Dominic Cummings? Dominic Cummings is the barking dog yapping at his heels. Well, at least we can all uh, agree that he's barking. But why does he command such headlines today? It's as if he suddenly decides, I'm going to command a headline. And then he does. The power of Dominic Cummings, uh, even as the dog of Farage, is significantly greater than the power of any MP in Westminster on any side of the House. Can you think of any MP who decides, I'm going to command headlines, and does? No. They are desperate, crawling up the woodwork, trying to think of which slogans they can repeat that will actually get a hearing. Because everybody knows the slogans, because the slogans are boring, and because they've been told, don't say anything unless it's a slogan. Oh, no, but I don't have anything in my brain except for a slogan that was put there by somebody else. Simon, Simon, help me. No. Uh, Dominic Cummings might be starting up a new party, but it's it's the same, same rubbish that we've seen before and before. Uh, this will be a party which won't get elected, but will have some significant influence. It might take away from the Reform Party. Well, well done for that.